99% of my sermon today is about spiritual dynamics, not about physical people. The enemy and the spirit of Antichrist and the political spirit of Jezebel and some Pharisee, political spirit of Pharisee is still there. We're still keeping him at bay. He's trying to creep back in now. So I'm praying about that every day. But beyond that, there are some other things that are going on. And um, those political... Okay, for instance, the Lord gave me a vision last week, early on. It's about a week ago. And in this vision, he took me up while I was praying, praying in the Spirit. And quickly, in the second heaven, I looked down and I saw the earth and I saw a creature in what appeared to be Europe. It could have possibly been even indicated a little bit more south, like in like through the Middle East and North Africa, but Europe primarily. And I saw this creature dive into the water and swam underwater to the east coast of the United States and crawled up on the land. And the Lord gave me Isaiah 27, 1. He spoke it to me. Let's read it. In that day, the Lord with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. Leviathan, that twisted serpent. And he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. As he spoke that to me, I understood. You know, we, we, I've been obedient all along to talk about the political spirits of Jezebel. Pharisee, but Jezebel and so forth. But I've also shared with you that Jezebel worshipped Baal. She was a priestess of Baal, so that there was an overlording spirit above. And that's what I saw. That overlording spirit was Leviathan, the Lord was talking about. Leviathan, the sea monster. The, uh, the references there uh, and the wording in that particular scripture talking about scaled sea creatures. And the symbolism is in power. Usually in scripture, they're all applied to rulers or to governments. Now see, a lot of times we talk about, well, that individual over there has a spirit of Jezebel. May or may not, but you understand what I mean. We're, or, you know, Leviathan is trying to gobble up my personal finances. And there's nothing wrong with that because of the flow down, the way that things work. But I've been dealing this entire time with the head spirits. The political spirit of Jezebel, who serves Leviathan. Leviathan is, uh, has to do with ruling. It's a political situation, trying to, the one world government, all that you can go through and you can look at the beast, uh, and how that Leviathan is what gave, even in the book of Revelations, the power to the beast. So I, I don't want to teach too long on that. But just to bring up that it's about the terror of governments and political rulers who are anti-Christ and who persecute the church, the body, the people of the Lord Jesus Christ. Their anti-Christ will. And so I saw that and I knew this is what I caught in the spirit. I didn't incorporate it into any, I, like I said, I had to write a book for prayer helps. Um, but I knew the Lord was telling me that that is next. The hammer, the sword, if you will, of justice, the sword of the Lord, was coming down on Leviathan. The crocodile, the snake, the scaled sea monster. The scale, meaning, you know, the, uh, the protection mm -hmm. is very strong. And the bite is either venomous or powerful for destruction. And the Lord is coming against that. And then, several days later, I was praying. And the Lord spoke to me. Galatians 5.20. Why don't you go there real quick.
Galatians 5.20. And yeah, I, I hear, I hear the Lord speak, and he'll, he'll quote the verse to me, or I'll recognize uh, the reference, and, and the words will just come to me in the Spirit. And he said, he said this, he said, the works of sorcery are coming against you and coming against the body of Christ. Pull them down. Well, in Galatians 5.20, talking about the works of the flesh, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. And that's just that one verse. Kind of sounds like, what's going on, huh? <laughs> but he emphasized sorcery. Sorcery. There are several words that are, are connected with witchcraft, sorcery, the dark, the occult, uh, in the Bible and in the New Testament. Uh, and all of them are incorporated and all of them flow together. Uh, magic arts. But the one that's there in the Greek is talking about, it's, it's a word that we get pharmacy from, okay? But, but don't go off the deep end. <laughs> And throw away any medications that you may have prescribed or go condemn other people. All right? That's not what it's talking about. What the word sorcery is saying is the use of drugs, potions, charms, incantations to control other people, to place them in a bewitched status where they are confused, mm -hmm. perhaps sleepy, don't know what decisions to make other than to please you. It's to exert spiritual control over. Look at the sorcerers that you find in the book of Acts and how that the power of God came and just destroyed them. Okay? Destroyed the sorcerer. Destroyed that power. That's why he calls it the work of the flesh. Okay? The work of the flesh. Sorcery, there is a spirit behind it that's spiritual. And there's spiritual power within that seducing spirit. But it's a work of the flesh the same way that religionism is a work of the flesh. Religionism will seek to control without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit or the revelation of God. Religionism is seeking to keep the word of God without revelation. And so the work of the flesh, boy, you're getting a lot today. Just bear with me. I got to finish this all. Um, sorcery becomes a work of the flesh. It appeals to the flesh. It draws in the flesh. And then it controls and manipulates the flesh. So he said, pray against that. And that was several days before I even heard about this whole thing about, you know, the witches. Uh, that all trying to get together different witches covens and pray, what was it, like the day before yesterday at midnight to pray against Donald Trump and all that. You know what? And that's remember that the vision that the Lord gave me a year ago, summer of 2016, where he showed me the witches' covenants and yeah. warlocks and things and how, and to pray against them. You know, their power, they have limited power, but they're deceived, and it's broken. The right arm of the Lord smashes them asunder. But still, it's there and tries to have influence. It causes... Confusion in the, in the spiritual realm. If anybody listening to me right now has been experiencing over the last week an increase in confusion, in buffeting, buffeting circumstances produced by buffeting spirits, etc. Uh, if you've had attacks on your body and attacks on your finances, attacks on your relationships, if it has been an unusual increase of those problematic things in your life, it's connected with the swirling and the stuff that's going on in the spiritual realm. 
It also manifests as anxiety and depression and oppression. It also manifests as fatigue and sleepiness. So those are all general indicators. So that means you rise up against it. Mm -hmm. You have the power over it. You pull it down in the spirit. Now, again, I don't want anybody to think that it's just this great spiritual warfare where we're constantly out there just fighting. No. No. Everything you do is a fight. The greatest act of spiritual warfare is doing the word. Because every time you do the word, every time you keep the word, every time you act on revelation, it's taking ground from the enemy. It's releasing the kingdom of God. Our focus is releasing the authority, releasing the kingdom, releasing the power, releasing the blessings, releasing the salvations, releasing, you see what I mean? Healings, prosperity, everything. Releasing it. But you can't release it without butting up against the opposition. And so therefore we tear down those strongholds. So, praise God. Uh, there also is the sword of justice that the Lord has spoken to me about that's been released. And so that sword of justice is coming through us. Our authority, our mouths, our words, our prayers, our declarations. Everything that we do, we release it by our faith. Um, the fog that I've talked about, that uh, the Lord showed me in another vision, secularism, atheism, new age, occult, worldliness, uh, greed, hatred, all those things. That fog, remember, he told me that the wind of the Holy Spirit blows away the fog from a people or a nation. But it takes third heaven authority to destroy the fog machine. And so that's what we're doing. Praise God. Um, so these kind of things are happening. But on the one hand, the enemy is being put down. But on the other hand, revival, spiritual awakening, the blessings of God. Youth, prosperity, all of these things are coming back because what the enemy has hoarded in his attempt and he has drawn in, not only of spiritual essence, but of natural assets, political power, wealth, all of those different things is being taken from him. That's why they're so ticked off. 